Okay. Serious News, our Home Affairs Committee has warned that ongoing protests risk acting as a continued drain on police resources, placing their ability to deal with wider policing at risk. Now, recent protests have placed severe pressure on police forces and officers, particularly in London. The size and the frequency of those protests over the conflict in Gaza has undoubtedly strained resources. In the studio with us are Talk TV's political correspondent Alicia Fitzgerald and also former political advisor and commentator Leon Emerali. Thank you both so much for being here. Alicia, just start with, summarise for us what this committee of MPs found, in essence, that policing these protests is really expensive and using an awful lot of police resource. Yes, so they've done some research into the recent protests, particularly uh, the ones in London, because those are usually ones on a far bigger scale than, than more rural areas across the country and, and smaller cities as well. And they found that this is costing the Met Police a lot of money and that is whether that's because of deploying more officers there or just general equipment that's needed and things like that all just to try and keep these protests under control so they found it's costing about 20 million pounds which is obviously a lot of money for the Met Police who are already pretty stretched um, in terms of funding and resources at the moment and they also found that the, the Met Police were having to take off rest days so police who were normally off um, and having their, you know, allotted holiday, we're having to be back on call, and then we're also having to be paid for um, during these days as well. So, mm. big impacts. Leon, um, forgive me, um, I hate the fact that I sit here most mornings and I'm called cynical. I just see it slightly differently. Lissy is absolutely right. £20 million it's costing. Let's nail this straight away. It is absolutely the right in a democracy to protest. But what we're talking about here is whether those protests through their disruptive uh, elements, whether it's fanaticism getting... I mean what was put onto the, the, the side of Big Ben, mm. whether you're Jewish or not Jewish, was a slur, and the police stood by and let that happen. And what I find astonishing in this debate is that it's all these extra hours, it's all this extra money, and yet we have a damn police force in London that if you get burgled, they can't turn up anyway, and yet we see them on television stood there with their arms crossed. Why are they not enforcing law? The damn officers that are there, pal, that's what I want to know. Well, this is it, and I feel sorry for those police officers, Jeremy, because they are being sucked away Absolutely. from the important work they signed up to do as a police officer. And I think for these protests in particular, they, they've made their point, these protesters. And I think we are quite clear that, they're, that they want to see a ceasefire. They well, want they're going to say that it's working because end. Biden said it could be happening by Friday. So if I take the other view, the protesters will say, what we've done has worked. I'm talking about... I see things that aren't right. The police don't do anything. Well, indeed, and, and that is one of the big problems. In London, there is a problem with knife crime. There is a problem with burglaries. There is a problem with muggings. And yet, we see these police officers, tens of thousands of them in some instances, being pulled into these large-scale protests where simply they're not able to protect individuals out on the street that a police officer signs up to do as part of their job. I think we've got to be really careful here because a right to protest and a right to freedom yeah. of speech must be protected. And yeah. I think those police officers... I, I'm not sure about your argument that says, oh, those police officers want to be at solving crimes. Part of their job is to protect things like the right to fr have your freedom of speech. No, but the protest. argument is... Are, are I'm just we, asking Leon. I know, but are we wasting our time doing that? Well, I think that's part of the problem, Rosie. And, and you make the right point. We have to have freedom to protest. However, when you've got this large-scale protest, week on week on week, it's sucking away those incredibly tight resources. So already. what are you suggesting is the alternative? You tell people they can't protest? No, I think that these need to be better organised. I think we need to have politicians who work alongside these protesters to actually make sure that their voice is being heard, they feel as if their voice is being heard, and that the solution isn't always thousands of people on the streets sucking away those resources. What is Sometimes the, solution, the solution could be actually dialogue with politicians, dialogue with decision makers on a smaller scale that isn't simply banners and people taking can to we the bring streets. It, can we bring it to what I said before? And Rosie's dead right. We must never lose the right to protest. And, and actually, the protesters would say that if this ceasefire happens, it's been successful. Mm. Should they be protesting again this weekend, then, if there is a ceasefire? Well, I mean, the answer to that is, is, in my view, no, they shouldn't, because the point's been made, and if there is a ceasefire, then they've got to the end of their, mm. of their goal. We can always protest. There's always something to protest about, and that's a great thing about this democracy. But it shouldn't be the case that the same issue is being repeated over and over. What if other people want to, want to protest on other issues, but simply they can't? But they can't in this instance, because the resources are being ploughed into a single protest around Gaza. Hold on. What if others want to protest that on that scale? 
but that's not stopping anyone else from protesting. No. It just means that there won't be as many police at the protest for you to remember that. So no, absolutely on any subject, but, if you want to go and do a separate protest on anything, you are allowed to do that. those protests can only go ahead with the relevant pr police resources. That's, that's not to, true. It is true. You can't have a protest given permission to go ahead if you haven't got the police there able to effectively do their job. Any, and control. I don't think anybody in a democracy, I, I'm not speaking for other people, but I think we absolutely have a right to protest. I think we can get embroiled, unfortunately, in the rights and wrongs of a protest. I made a point the other day, earlier, that people, nobody responded to it. There was one lone Israeli man with a placard saying anti Hamas. He was moved along so he didn't agitate the 250,000 who have a different view. They are absolutely within their rights to have a different view. For me, I just find it really ironic that we have a police force that doesn't, I think, seemingly do what it should do for people away from protesting, whether they're getting sucked in or not. I'm with the girls. I think, I think you that's can a debate. Protest. I, I think, think that's that's a debate, debate about saying is, we don't have enough yeah, police. Yeah. Well, that's it as well. I think that's the point. And if we, we we can all accept that police is policing is stretched in this country, yep. in police forces up and down the country, not just in London. So we need to have a return to ensuring that the police are working on the important issues that matter, solving crimes, keeping people safe. But the safe. issue is, Leon, if you do that, you are being seen to say you cannot protest, and that must never change. I keep saying it. What we need to be doing is looking at those parts of the protest be they disruptive, be they fanatical, be they over the top, are those draining more resources and should the police be more active and less impotent when they're doing what they're doing? That's that's how I would see it. That's it, and I think that's what lots of people are actually advocating, is not that we just cease the right to protest full stop, clearly. I mean, I'm sure everyone at some point in their life feels like they do want to exercise their right to free mm. speech, and I know that we all do that at Talk TV as well. So. It's really important that we make sure we tread that really carefully. And I think what lots of politicians and lots of just members of the public are advocating is not that these protests stop totally. Yeah. I'm sure some people do advocate that. But the main thing here is just to check that they don't cross a bar. They don't become yeah. violent. People's safety isn't threatened. Things aren't damaged. And that just the general feeling in these protests is peaceful. One